Hello everyone, welcome back to American Truck Simulator. My name is Big Bill. How are y'all doing today as I am doing good as it is February 20th, 2020. It's Thursday. <laughs> uh, second to last day of the week. How are y'all doing as I am doing good as... Oh man, it is Thursday. Not everyone's favorite. Well, I guess Friday would be everyone's favorite day. Thursday is probably the least favorite because, you know, it's the day before Friday. <laughs> Anyways, how are y'all doing today as I am doing good? Uh, uh, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Where you guys are watching from as... It's actually Thursday morning uh, for me. I just got off work about a few hours ago. Um, did some stuff. And I figured, you know, I got time i can record this hopefully you guys will be able to see this thursday afternoon if not it'll be friday morning but got a lot of stuff to talk about um nascar um the wreck um everything to talk about um and a few other things um but first things first let's talk about ats let's talk about today's episode today we are hauling a concrete element to 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 Cum Acara, New Mexico. Uh, we're going from Tucson, Arizona to to Cum Acara, New Mexico. Um, it's going to be a ten-hour and fourteen-minute trip, five hundred and seventy-five miles. Uh, we're going to get paid twenty-seven thousand seven hundred sixty-three dollars, and the cargo weighs forty-two thousand three hundred twenty-eight pounds. Now, um, a lot of you asked me where do uh, some of these uh, come from. Um, this is a trailer pack from Jazzy Cat. This is the Fontaine Magnitude Low Boy, um, from his trailer pack. Um, and I think I can probably bring it up. Yep, yeah, right here. This is his Low Boy. Uh, he's got actually a bunch of Low Boys in here, but this is one of them. And here is the one we are loaded with. So, and if you guys know Jazzy Cat, he loves to throw in some nice loads. There we go. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Where's the other little boy? I think he's got... 92 Phantom. Oh. I think... Yes. Here's the Renegade. Fontaine Re uh, Renegade. Um, that one's got different loads. And then if you come down here, low one, low two, low three. Um, those are all low boy trailers. That one's for military. This one, I think that's military. Yes, military and regular loads. And if I can get there. Mouse is not acting properly today. Um, here's the third one. I think there's one more. Let me look. Oop, no. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah, right here. The TM Pittus LB5. Different amounts of cargo. Oh, man. I know there's one down here. That's RTA. Nope. <laughs> I don't know where it is. I thought there was a no. No. Oh, there it is. Dragon. This is the Dragon 5 axle trailer. Um. It, it, this is, it, here's the reason why I could have, I thought it was down here. No, it's right up here. This is the Dragon 5 axle trailer. Um, this is actually a pretty unique trailer. And these four cargos are very heavy. Um, I will, I did pull that one, but I will be pulling them later. But um, anyway, let's get back on topic. Um, not a very big, hopefully not a very long video today. But anyways, hope you all enjoy um the video and let's actually get hauling <laughs> as you guys know we are in we're still in tucson so i'm just gonna jump on the world map 
Uh, once we get on the highway, I'll start talking. I'm not going to turn off my mic, but um, you guys won't be able to hear me talk. So, But there you go. And you guys already know we've already been here, but you know there's a lot of gray here in New Mexico, and hopefully we can get some of the stuff filled, maybe come back through Arizona, and we'll jump through all the other areas. But let's get moving. by that is a little bit of time there but god look at this truck uh somebody did ask this did you run um uh, the big ones the flat tops uh yes i did i ran okay i ran the custom paint uh flat top chrome on the top i ran them once and said uh this time when i bought this one cell phone <laughs> but anyway let's jump off that and let's talk about some news everyone whether you're not a racing fan or you're not an NASCAR fan but you do hear about it uh, let's talk about the day 2500 which was this past Monday this week um, it was supposed to be Sunday but got rained out. So, uh, race is moved to Monday afternoon, uh, 4.30, or no, 4 o'clock, sorry, on Fox. You know, it was a pretty bad normal race. Uh, race was good. There were a few wrecks. There was a big one. And some of the heavy favorites were still involved in going. And that's when this happened final lap of the Daytona 500, as they were coming to the checker, um, people saw Ryan Newman uh, get his car loose, came down to the track, and Ryan Blaney came down and pushed him. Um, and I just want to make this clear, I am going to talk about Ryan Blaney and Denny Hamlin and all that here in a little bit, and Corey LaJoy, but I just want to talk about Ryan Newman and to the Ryan Newman and to his family, um, my thoughts and prayers have been with you ever since the accident, ever since it was reported, ever since I watched that ending of that race that day. Um, growing up, I watched Ryan Newman when he first started, pretty much. Um, when he 
came in as a rookie with Jimmy Johnson, and when he was in the, the big, what is it, Bush series? That's right. Um, but my thoughts and prayers are still with Ryan Newman, um, even though, and the reason I say that like that is because 48 hours later, yesterday morning, I mean, yesterday afternoon or midday, there was some time to get there. Brian Newman walked out of the hospital down in Daytona or center um, with his two little daughters and walked out of the hospital and they flew home to Charlotte and I just have to say that is just incredible but you guys did not watch the race what happened was Blaney um, as Blaney was pushing Newman Blaney hit the um, right bumper right rear part of the bumper, the back bumper of Newman's car, which caused Newman's car to lose control. And that's when you see him hit the wall head on. Daytona 500, he beat out Ryan Blaine by just a few mere inches. Um, but the thing that's making everyone mad is that Danny Hamill was doing a celebration. Here's why, though. Here's what happened. A lot of people don't know why Danny Hamill was celebrating, or the Joe Gibbs pit crew, uh, his pit crew, Joe Gibbs Chase, went out to the track. Now, obviously, everyone heard the news why. What happened was, when Danny Hamlin crossed the finish line, he didn't know Ryan Newman wrecked. Well, he saw Ryan Newman wrecked, but here's what happened. He was taking off his radio and some wires. If you guys go inside the car, you can actually see um, the cord where uh, they could talk to their spotter and their crew chief and all their cables and belts and all that. Denny took his radio communication off, and Denny Hamlin's spotter, Chris Gayhart, I believe, got a loose there, um, ran down. The spotter sits on top of the roof at the Daytona 500, so he ran down to where Ryan Newman's spotter was. As he was getting an update on Ryan Newman, which nobody knew about, Denny Hamlin and Spider came back and tried to tell Denny not to do a burnout. That's when you see all the fans start booing and all that. Denny did not know what happened until he got to Victory Lane. Once he got done celebrating, somebody walked up to Denny and says, Hey, we gotta stop. Uh, Ryan's in the car. Um, they're, they're still trying to take him out. And that's when Joe Gibbs 
um, the owner Joe, of Joe Gibbs Racing came out and said, look, uh, I am, he apologized to the crowd, he apologized to all the media that they did not know that Ryan was still in the car at the time. Now, am I an Denny Hamlin fan? No. Uh, do I respect him? Of course. Do I want him to get hurt? No. I do not want any of them guys to get hurt. I might not like a certain, like, I might not, I, I don't like Kyle Busch, okay? I'm not a fan of Kyle Busch, but I respect him. I do not want him to get hurt at all. Um, I definitely don't want him to pass away at a racetrack in a race car, knowing that his little boy is probably there on his pick box with his wife. That is one thing I do not want to see, you know. And definitely here on the news that, oh, hey. that yesterday was 19 years ago yesterday um, the great Dale Earnhardt Sr. track passed away at the Daytona 500 in 2001 um, 19 years ago yesterday um, which I think I was at that time but I was starting to love NASCAR <laughs> grandfather he was a big Dale Singer fan um, you know me growing up I was a Jeff Gordon fan <laughs> but you know there's a lot of things that I want but the ones that I do not want is none of the guys passing away at the track or you know getting seriously hurt so Just like for NBA guys, football, NFL guys, major league baseball players, NHL players, you know, I might not like a certain team, but I have respect for all the guys that do that because there is something I could never do. I could never make it to that potential in sports. I could never make it all the way like that guys do. There's no way. And that's why I respect them on every single one of them that's played in sports. So, with that being said, you know, a lot of brand new safety equipment, a lot of brand new devices are coming out to save these drivers. And pretty much what NASCAR did was it, you know, it saved Ryan Newman's life. These brand new cars are coming out with these brand new roll cages, uh, the Haas device. Um, so, yeah.
Now, see, they are now at Las Vegas. Um, they did name a replacement driver for Ryan Newman, um, and that is uh, Ross Chastain, um, who is now racing at Kaluga Racing in the Xfinity Series. So, uh, good for Ross Chastain. You can see that he's uh, going to get a good ride at Ross Fairway Racing. And I do wish Ryan Newman a very speedy recovery. Uh, Rocket Man. Can't wait to see you back on the track. Um, hopefully we can see you back on the track. And the reason I say hopefully is that hopefully this accident, you know, doesn't, doesn't have a tire. Uh, they did not say injuries or anything like that. Um, I did hear one thing that it was, there's a, there was uh, some bleeding or something. Um, I'm not going to go into it too much detail on that.
all these guys had the idea behind me in the summer tours. CS389. Uh, quite simple. Well, I'm going to make that question sound a little better. So why Viper 389 over the Peterbilt 579 or the Peterbilt 389 from SCS? It's actually quite simple, really. Uh, sorry for that. Excuse me. It's actually quite simple. Number one, these engines, now there are some SCS engines in this truck, but they sound a lot better. Um, that's one. Number two, this truck has a lot of modifications you can do to it. Add lights, 
had a whole bunch of lights, um, had a decent beacon back, which in my opinion that beacon is a lot better than the two beacons you get with the SCS truck. And and a different array of chassis you get a sleeper with this chassis on one, you can get a different size sleeper. Of course I got the 72 inch bump. So out there too. You can get on the Steam or on uh, body websites. To a road where let's say this side of the road was dad and was dash not solid dash yellow line and that side of the road was solid this side of the road that we're on we can pass that side of the road cannot pass and if it was opposite opposite we can pass so just want to throw that out there yep see there was passing there was no passing zone sign so must be a guys. Right, hello. <laughs>
Yes. Uh, so that's one question. The second question I was answered was. Um, I should write these ones down. <laughs> oh yes. Uh, do I? What is the next game coming out for STS? What do I see coming out for this? And honestly, to answer that question, I I'm, I'm starting to think they're going to come out with an Australian truck simulator because a lot of people want them to bring in that um, because they're the ones who the road trains. Um, I have heard people say they would, they would love, but they would love to see that game. Um, I don't know, honestly, because are we going to have an ATS-2 or are they going to do all of America? So that I don't know about. Um, but. Moving forward, I can see them stop yes to uh, the updates and all that. So, so when I say that, that is, I mean ETS2 will only get updated like only 1.3. That's what I can see happening. Yeah, I they're gonna stop updating one of these two games. And they did say ATS is. Oh, across the driveway station. <laughs> they had a one and all. Right there. Which. I think a 
But anywho, um, we are close to the end of the journey. It's 11 miles, 14 minutes. Not a very long video, almost, but not just not like the last one. Was like, I don't know, what, 58 minutes? That's gonna do it for me. Hey guys, I hope y'all enjoyed the video, and um, I hope y'all have a wonderful weekend. As, but I will be actually, I will actually. I know Saturday I will be at Lincoln Speedway for the icebreaker. Um, that starts off the 410 sprint car racing here in Pennsylvania. Uh, that is the first race of the year here in PA. So can't wait for Saturday. Looks like good weather. <sighs> Anywho, hope you all enjoy. Please like, comment, subscribe if you want to see more. And catch you all next time. See ya.